podcast listeners, welcome to the NK News Podcast. This is your host, Jacko Zwetsu. Today it is Friday, February the 10th, 2023, and I'm joined here in the studio by Collins Worko, Jongmin Kim, and Chad O'Carroll to talk about yesterday, or the day before yesterday's parade in Pyongyang, marking the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Korean People's Army. Before we get started, please, a request and a reminder to leave a review about this podcast on whatever platform you use and to share this episode with everyone you think should hear it or who might be interested. What's more, like and subscribe. Secondly, check out nknews.org, where each day my fabulous journalist colleagues write the best North Korea-focused journalism. A subscription for a year costs less than a dollar a day, and that helps to fund the excellent reporting that my colleagues do, not only about the parade, but about everything from and around North Korea. Uh, and it also supports this podcast. Thirdly, follow NK News on Twitter, and all of us, our uh, links will be in the show notes. Okay, so nine months ago, a little bit more than nine months ago, Jongmin Kim, Chad Carroll, NK Pro contributor Chris Green and I did a two-and-a-half-hour live stream of the Military Foundation Day Parade held to commemorate the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Korean People's Army in 1932. That really was an arduous march for us, involving at least two false starts, because North Korea doesn't announce its broadcast of these parades well in advance. Today, we're recording this episode after the broadcast of the parade, which was uh, held on the evening of Wednesday, 8th of February, to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Korean People's Army uh, on February 8th, 1948. First of all, how can the Korean People's Army have two founding days? What the heck is up with that? Well, the other one is the Korean People's Revolutionary Army. Uh, that's what the 90th anniversary was for. I'm not actually a historian, so I can't exactly say what the difference is there, but there's, you know, a difference of 15 years, a difference of nationhood, stuff like that. <laughs> so okay. what, we've got an official North Korean calendar there. So if we went to April 25th, what, what would it say? Do you know? Foundation Day. Korean People's Revolutionary Army. Okay. And yesterday was just... Korean People's Korean- Army. Korean People's Army, okay. Okay, so one was the commemoration of the the founding of the anti-Japanese partisan army. Yeah. Uh, I see, I see. And the other one is the after the founding of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The old chestnut, yeah. Or actually before, because the uh, the Democratic the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was officially launched on uh, November uh, September 9th, nineteen forty eight, and the army was uh, launched on February eighth, nineteen forty eight. So it actually precedes the founding of the republic by a few months. Oh. But 8th February in 2020, or sorry, 2018, that was the first time this was a military parade. And there was some speculation at the time that that had been hastily uh, chosen to coincide with the Pyeongchang Olympics opening oh. ceremony, which I think was the well, day Well, they claim after. that the first military parade was on February 8th, 1948. <laughs> And there's a lot of video footage and stuff like that. I haven't looked into it myself, but we might mm-hmm. be getting a little off track here. But that's yeah, the history. This was mm-hmm. a, yeah. a history-filled military parade. Uh, lots of references to history here. Right. Uh, now, when and how did we know ahead of time that a parade would be held on or around February 8th? What were the signs? So we, we, we've gotten used to checking. I mean, other analysts have been checking this for years. Before I came here in 2018 to NK News, we started looking at it. So it's just a habit that you look at this uh, training center in east, southeast Pyongyang where they specifically train for military parades. It's the same size as Kim Il-sung Square, mm. and they train there doing their marching in block formations for months. So we noticed that that started in December. Um, they were already... And how do, how do we see that? Satellite imagery. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, satellite imagery looking at that training center, and we could already see in December that they had uh, amassed over 11,000 soldiers mm. uh, marching in their block formations, mar- practicing their goose steps, how they will enter the square, stand in the square, do their chanting, how they'll, you know, there's all sorts of stuff they have to practice to get it perfect. You know, they're in the military and they're made to do that. Okay. And when exactly what uh, was the parade held? The, it was a night of Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. And initially we were expecting it could be Tuesday night. Right. So that the broadcast and the reporting of the parade matches with the actual day of the anniversary. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. We did hear jets flying over Pyongyang and other signs that could have been, we thought could have been the parade, but it maybe it was a preparation training, it mm. seems. Or it could have been like a pre-recording of things because it was a very heavily 
edited right. uh, version of the parade that was uh, aired on Thursday, but it was actually held on Wednesday night. Yeah, uh, Chad, what time did you have it starting at? Was it about 9 p.m. or so when the first Yeah, we got off? tipped off by a source in Pyongyang that they could hear the music associated with Kim Jong-un's arrival around uh. 9 p.m. Mm. And then fireworks and then uh, aircraft about 40 or 50 minutes later and then fireworks to signify the end of it at just about 10 10 right. okay so it's so quite an hour and 10 quite a short parade yeah mm. uh, half the length of the uh october 20th 20 october 10th 2020 but if you look at the video of the fireworks started when the biggest icbm was rolling in ah. so it could have been 10 or so minutes a little bit longer mm-hmm. than we initially thought so okay Kim walked in at 10 p.m on the dot so maybe the other music started at nine but anyway like people uh, what did we hear that they started closing off streets in the afternoon on Wednesday? Mm. Pe- satellite imagery that we obtained uh, from Planet Labs also showed cars and buses on the road on the afternoon of Wednesday, but they were already they already put you know up to around seventeen ICBMs near the square. Seventeen on, on okay. Wednesday afternoon, well, so well, they were preparing a lot, you know. And uh, I guess it people must have started to come into the square right around dusk. Yeah. Okay. And when was footage of the parade broadcast? It was yesterday evening from 6 to 8, two hours. So a little bit less Thursday. than 24 hours after the event. Thursday, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, because we're on Friday morning now. So so the parade was at uh, somewhere around 9, 10 p.m. Wednesday, and then the uh, the broadcast was on Thursday evening, almost 24 hours later. Uh, but before that, we had what, do we, what did we have before? There was kind of a staggered release, right? They have photographs and a text report. In the morning, there was a delayed KCNA and Rodong Shimon. We were waiting since... Holland, I believe, from 5.45, and we were waiting all morning, refreshing every second, but um, it didn't come out until like 9, 10, the KCNA first text, right? Don't remember, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) First a text report, then a few photos, then the rest of it. But aren't we really burying the lead here, Jacko? Are we? Well, what happened at the parade? That's what matters, doesn't it? Well, I'm getting to that, yes, yes. But I'm just wondering, why, why is North Korea so sensitive about releasing... Uh, the information and about uh, staggering the broadcast times and, and, and not releasing those, those uh, not letting people know in advance when they're going to show it. I, I would suggest because it involves Kim Jong-un and security is mm. uh, extremely high around any appearance. Like when we were there in 2018 and 2017 for parades, the North Korean minders kept on saying, oh, when is the parade? And they were like, we, we don't even know if there is a parade. Yeah. They They... And even though we knew April 15th, 2017, that was going to be the parade day, they insisted on suggesting that just an important event and a vague important event may happen. So it seems to me that they probably really do uh, protect information about that, even mm. though it's pretty obvious for us when it's going to take place. And on the question of the do why delay the reporting, it's just uh, I, I personally think that they'll never air another military parade live. They did maybe in the 2017 w- or? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was talking to someone about this. I think it was before 2017, but there was one. Sure. Once. There was a few. There was a MOU, uh, Ministry of Unification, put out a document that showed a few Maybe we're aired live, but I believe that they'll never do it again because mm. they're so into the, the the value that they get from editing all of this Top together. Top gun style right, yeah, and so. a lot of cutting in with pre-recorded video, zoom shots, a lot of fancy editings and music yeah, involved dramatic. into that. Yep. And I can imagine it would be a very difficult job mm-hmm. if you're a video editor and, for and I, KCTV. Yeah, and I reckon because of that, they're probably not going to want foreign journalists covering these things in future who will get Mm. not you know dodgy unedited shots from the ground and the ones that y'all took in 2017 uh you and i forgot who else was there yeah yeah you guys ran stories on the ankeny's website you can find them of uh yeah photos that our reporters take on the ground zooming Ah. in on missiles you know you can see the kind of sketchy welding on the missiles huh. you can do all sorts of stuff yeah so um, yeah. probably wouldn't like that in the future all right so what was special about this parade colin well the top line findings are that there was a new solid fuel icbm uh suspected solid fuel icbm uh rolled now, why out. do you say suspected how do we not know uh well it's uh, i'm not a missile expert but it's this is what all the experts say mm-hmm. that it is a, a that it's a solid fuel ICBM behind a canister on a launch vehicle. So you can't actually see the missile itself. It's canisterized. So what would happen is it would raise up from the back of the, the really long truck, 
and uh, then the cap would pop off, and then the missile would fly out from the canister. Whereas, uh, as opposed to that, there's the Hwasong-17 mm-hmm. ICBM, which is another big deal from this parade that they had uh, 11 of them roll out into the square, and there was only maximum four of those in the past the April 2022 parade and yeah. the October 2020 parade. Yeah, so anyway... Those missiles are just on the back of the truck, and they raise up and they launch. There's no canister. Uh huh. Okay. So the can. And those are liquid fueled uh, missiles. Yeah. And so I don't know. Just to run through it real quick, the liquid fuel missiles they have to fuel those prior to launch. It takes a lot of time. Uh, whereas the solid fuel missiles are uh, the the fuel is uh, as I, I believe Ankit Panda writes on our website. It's baked in to the mm. to the to the missile whenever it's manufactured. So it's ready to go. It's ready at any to time. go. Yeah. Okay. And that was a lot of uh, a lot of missile uh, hardware out there this time, right? Yeah. So it, it it demonstrates North Korea's ability to manufacture not only the missiles but also these really complicated, very gigantic uh, launch vehicles. And are these are the TELs, the transporter reactor launchers. Right. Right. Okay. Though we should point out that what we saw demonstrates they've an a bit an engineering ability to uh, produce at least a dozen of these. Uh, Hwasong 17 transporter heavy launchers but when it comes to the launchers that have been used for the Hwasong 15 the 14 and now this new solid fuel ICBM they are all uh, they all seem to actually be the same uh, flatbed trucks imported from China ah. for uh, logging originally for logging so purposes. they modified yeah, but it doesn't because they've never actually shown more than six of these mm. or seven, I think, uh, if you include the the one if something fails. We've never seen more than that at once, so it suggests that they've not been able to clone that and build enough to like wheel out, say, eighteen of those or or like twenty four or whatever it may be. Thus, there is still you know they they, they still need to clone those if they want to have dozens of Poisson 15s and 40 and they're probably not going to use the but they've 14. got these gigantic uh, 11 axle tails for the Poisson yeah they 17, could do so it i'm sure they could do it but we don't know if them. those are they're too big for the the Poisson 15 and the uh, Poisson 14 so you're saying there's an advantage to having more Poisson 15s over Poisson 17s no i'm just saying that like we with with the uh tel that we saw the solid fuel missile wheeled out on that is the same tel as we would see in the past for Hwasong 15 and Hwasong 14. So if all are now deployed for the solid fuel missiles, it means that there are none available for the Hwasong 15 if they are still fielding those missiles for any purpose. I don't, know. I don't see why there's any reason to believe that they don't have, that they haven't manufactured both because they have at least 11 Hwasong 17 tells now. So they can clearly manufacture these things, although it's a different type of slightly different truck. But mm. anyway... What what are the uh, remind me and our listeners uh, which missiles are the ones that are supposed to be able to hit the continental United States? 14, 15, 17. Awesome, 14, 15, 17. Yeah. And the and, new one and, without a name. And probably. the new one which is a solid fuel that doesn't have a name yet, is that right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all it's implied. Cool. It's implied by the presentation. They have a uh, state media. This was their first, you know, presentation of this uh, supposed solid fuel ICBM. This is something that Kim Jong Un talked about wanting to produce at mm-hmm. the 2021 Congress. He also tested a solid fuel a very large solid fuel engine uh, last December, which is also implied to to be intended for use in an ICBM, an intercontinental range missile. So they haven't actually given us details and said like this is a missile, this is the range of this missile, but everything else implies. Right, okay. but in the KCTV version of the parade, when when these were which being... people can watch uh, later on tonight on KCNA Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it was being section. rolled out, the narrator was saying. Uh, these world's greatest weapon can has no limitation to its target range, mm-hmm. and it will go in the direction wherever the leader Kim Jong Un will point to. Okay, so, so I guess that's pretty clear then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Okay. And what now? What else, uh, Jong Min, was big about this parade? Well, when it comes to military capabilities from South Koreans' point of view, they would have been waiting for that six canister, uh, six hundred millimeter multiple rocket launchers, but they weren't there. These are the ones that Kim Jong-un said that are targeted at South Korea and Ah. capable of loading tactical nuclear weapons and so on and so forth that were deployed in some units. But there were 600 millimeter multiple rocket launchers that were not six canisters, but four canisters. Mm -hmm. Um, There were a couple of um, short range uh, capabilities that South Korea would have been taking a close note of, but it didn't look like anything was 
groundbreakingly new when it comes to capabilities related to South Korea. Yeah. There were no new actual systems. Exactly. So we were just trying to look at how many, mm -hmm. which ones are they rolling out. Right. So so I guess it, it, and because of that, I guess the context was also important. Uh, what stood out to me was there was a very notable lack of a direct messaging towards U U.S. or South Korea. Mm. Uh, South so Korea, no anti-imperialist rhetoric? There, there was anti-imperialist rhetoric, but huh? in a context of talking about the history, like right. the how the deceased commanders, the people who died decades ago, they, they sacrificed their lives to fight against the imperialists and so on and so forth. And South Korea was only mentioned once, not even once in Rodong Shimun or KCNA, it was only mentioned once during the KCTV broadcast mm. mentioning South Korean puppet states, mm -hmm. how puppet state, how it uh, causes challenges and threat to North Korea, but we overcame blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. And they did mention main enemy without referring it to South Korea, but when they were saying main, main enemy, they were showing the capabilities that were meant for targeting South Korea. Uh -huh. So I think that was as much um, direct messaging as we could see from what when it American? comes to... I guess at the end, the one I mentioned about like no limitation to the target mm -hmm. range could be an implication. So it's implied, yeah. It, it's implied, but there was no direct we yeah. hate Biden or we hate Yoon sort right. of messaging. There was no speech, which was also notable. Okay, that's notable. And yeah. the the one that stood out to me the most was that the KCTV and the photos, they were zooming in a lot and focusing a lot on how what a family guy Kim Jong-un is and how he loves his daughter and the daughter mm. loves him was one of the big themes alongside honoring the past generation commanders in the history. Right. But before we jump to the da the family, the daughter, the propaganda, all that, uh, just on your point on the, I just wanted to say the, the big picture stuff on, on uh, foreign relations uh, and maybe Chad has something to say on this as well. Just basically, yeah, they, they weren't, there wasn't some kind of uh, direct message you know we want you to hear this message there was a lot of implications it's 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 much of what we've seen for a while now for maybe a few years this we're comfortable with with what we're doing right now we're all in on long on nuclear missile development and this is what we're doing we don't really need to threaten you or uh, we don't need to give you any fig exactly. leaves like you wrote chad uh, we don't need to we're just doing what we're doing, and um, that's the base, basically the message. Right. right. So it's a kind of a what, a, a sort of an in, generally an internally focused North Korea. Well, every time there's a plenum or a parade, I'm writing same day analysis, yeah. and like since the plenum of December 2019, when Kim Jong Un said, "Right, we we give up on sanctions relief. We're just doubling down on." This is uh, ten like, months after the failure of the Hanoi summit. Yeah. Yeah. I find myself. Every time I write analysis, basically repeating the same thing, that the doors appear closed. Mm. There is no fig leaf for advocates of diplomacy and peace. And in fact, we seem to be incrementally moving further and further in that direction. I, I mean, some of the messages that we've seen from recent Kim Jong-un statements, I mean, it really looks like the door is closed on on peace and talks with, certainly with South Korea, definitely with the US and I just, yeah, I just feel like maybe they don't need to remind that point every every time there's an opportunity. I also wondered, and this was cut by the editors from my analysis, if... Um, Naughty editors. <laughs> no, they had a good point for cutting it. We've just come out of this bizarre five-day lockdown in Pyongyang. Mm. And I wondered if there, there could be something that might have contributed to the lack of a uh, speech. Uh. Because... Like, if there has been another massive wave of COVID and they don't want to talk about that, it would be like, for example, it, it's not as extreme, but imagine the Turkish president doing a speech and not addressing the earthquake that's right. just taken place. Like, like it, the optics domestically would be like, how can you stand up there and not talk? But our editors suggested, well, it's a military event. He probably could do that and just talk about military issues. But the reason I thought about it was because in... October 2020, the first nighttime parade, Kim Jong Un was crying. He, you know, there was this whole uh, rhetoric about how he felt bad for not doing a better job, and right. and, and so yeah, I, I I just wondered if the, we don't really know what happened during that lockdown or why it was so short, but I wondered if there could be a link there. Were any sign of COVID precautions at all? Was anybody wearing a mask or nope. socially distancing? They were on their way into the parade, like always. You know, there were all the soldiers were wearing masks in the trucks, and then. When, once, once they reach the yeah, once they enter the uh, Kim Il Sung Square, yeah, the you know force field around the square that prevents the virus from being there, yes. they, they don't have to wear masks. 
That's interesting. Okay, so uh, only on the way in. Hmm. What were you going to say, Jongwin? About the lack of speech, I think there would be many ways of interpretation. Like, is what? there precedent for that? Uh, Kim Jong Un not making a speech at a military or, or parade, or nobody making a speech at a military parade. Kim Jong Un, uh, sorry, Kim Jong Il, when he was absent from the parade after his 2008 stroke. Okay. Hmm. No speech. <laughs> no speech. Right. I mean, I guess you're asking it why why there wasn't a uh, what do they call it like a someone else making a sort of speech. Yeah. Usually, there's they just they'll go on for maybe 10 or 15 minutes about history and blah, blah, blah. And there wasn't any of that. And that's when Kim Jong-un doesn't always give a speech, but there right. usually is someone else to give an address, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, None so of that. So maybe I don't, they're I realizing it's boring for the people as there well. There was a lot of more boring stuff in the parade, that though. Is I mean, that is true. That is true. 15-minute flag-raising oh. ceremony. Kim, conspiracy theory. Kim Jong-un's really ill and can't do long public appearances. He didn't look very ill, though. I don't, I don't so think. I'm so happy. I have a theory. Ah. Imagine you brought your daughter for the first time to bring her to the public and do like a little pre-parade party for her and, you know, bring show her the flying jets in the shape of a star and showing her the, her favorite horse that are being paraded through the... You should say that the narrator actually said that. Oh, I, I, I will <laughs> talk about that. But um, imagine that and then... It looked like the entire theme of whenever camera was zooming into uh, the daughter and Kim Jong-un was to show how happy the family is and mm -hmm. how loving the daughter is. And if that's the case, it could have been, it could, it may have looked a little bit not coherent if he suddenly has a mic and says right. all the hostile stuff like we hate South Korea, we will strike it when the daughter's there like being happy about being there. That's that's just what I imagined in my head. Yeah, but and maybe they were afraid of the daughter doing an eye roll on camera while daddy's reading out a 15 minute speech. <laughs> oh no, I mean I can totally imagine him saying all sorts of stuff about the US and then turning to yeah. the daughter and saying, you know, isn't that right? And then she gives a thumbs She's up. Like <laughs> 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 um, okay, well, let's talk about the uh, the happy family uh, thing because it, it's not it's not unusual for Kim to make public appearances with his wife. He's done that before, but this is the first time we've sort of seen him and his wife, Ri Sol Ju, and the daughter, who may or may not be called Kim Ju Air, out in public. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. From the public who are there live, yes, that's the first time she appeared in state media four times before. Right, but her being there, walking there alongside the father and people watching it, it's the first time. And with the mother as well. Right, but that was interesting because the daughter and Kim Jong was walking together from the f first entrance on the red carpet holding hands, but mm -hmm. Ri Ju, the mother, was strolling a little bit like half a meter behind the two of them and the two of them in the center and the Ri Ju a little bit on the right um, so that she doesn't see the center. You said that that was very much like uh, the Chosun dynasty where the young right. bun would always walk in front and the, uh, the wife would walk a half meter behind. My wife, uh, if she were listening... Uh, would say that uh, this is just like me because I always walk too fast. Is it possible that Kim Jong-un and his daughter just walk a lot faster than Ri Sol Ju? They were not strolling that fast. Okay. Um, they also practiced this yes. many times. Right, this is a, a, it's a choreographed uh, yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. yeah, but it was interesting because it was like a very Pictou bloodline sort of optics. Like yeah. this is the Ri Sol Ju is not a Pictou bloodline. She married into right. one. But the daughter is. Yep. And it was very apparent from many of the optics that the KCTV showed last night. Yeah, well, let, let's talk about that because it's not just a live uh, parade. There's also a lot of interstitial pre-recorded bits that were edited in. Um, you've already mentioned Top Gun. There was a bit there that looked a bit like The Empire Strikes Back where they're out there fighting in the snowfield. Half-naked soldiers. There's another bit of half-naked soldiers that reminds me of uh, the annual South Korean military drills where the Marines take their shirts off and go and throw snow at each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked yeah. very familiar, yeah. So well, is this stuff we've seen before? Was there anything there that was unprecedented? I don't think so. They Also, I think it was maybe the first time was last year's parade where they did the this basically the same thing where as the soldiers start to walk into the square, they cut to a montage of training. So it was basically the same as that, just new clips, you know, training uh, urban settings right uh urban warfare training in the snow just um, becoming a little bit more fancier as they do that jumping from trains somersaulting over cars they were popping up from everywhere in the pre-recorded video like from the grasses from the water jumping into water from the snow from the hill mm. yeah very fun um, very very every, goofy everywhere you can imagine they were popping up internet fodder yes and can we tell if these were the same units that were marching in the parade that we were seeing in the pre-recorded bits so that was the interesting mm. uh editing they were uh, 
doing like they were cutting to the actual parade scene from the pre-recorded video here and there as they show soldiers training and then marching soldiers training and then marching so they it it seemed like it was heavily coordinated edited in that way right uh, did we see the um soldiers with the radioactive backpacks again this year were they out no there okay. was a nuclear chemical unit yeah i didn't get a chance to i have to look hey, we're you know we're like 12 hours after this thing first aired now so i did right. go home last night after all the coverage <laughs> and i did start to watch it again but i was like i just need to go to sleep <laughs> so i will want to watch it again but i'm pretty sure the nuclear chemical unit was just wearing gas masks right and right just gas suits. masks and right after the that unit there was an electronic jamming unit which was interesting what does that look like they have been appearing for a while in many parades but but, but what is are they holding a box with an antenna on it? I mean, what wow. is I don't know how that works. But actually, I just wrote an article about that recently. You can see it on our website okay. uh, about how the soldiers at the last parade were seen to be using uh, radio equipment made by Glocom, which is a company that has been suspected as being well, it's been pretty much proven to be North Korean for years, sanctioned by the UN, the US, and many other countries. Not uh, sanctioned by the UN. It was recommended for sanction. I right. Think. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Good. Yes. Thank you. And um, it ha is trying to sell its wares across the the world on the internet, and they've been found recently to be used in Ethiopia and maybe somewhere else. And uh, yeah, so it's interesting that North Korea is using their own, you know, advanced mm. military communications equipment. But I don't know much else about that. Were there any foreign dignitaries spotted at no. the parade? No. No. This has been an interesting development since 2018. Yeah. The first of these uh, foundation, uh, military foundation parades in 2018, February, was also the first time I recall where foreign diplomats and dignitaries were not allowed to come. Mm. Um, or not allowed to? No. Specifically and not invited? Not invited. Wow. And then, in, strangely, in September 2018, for the 9-9 nine -nine, uh, parade, dignitaries were invited and since then we've seen from none. friendly nations what china and uh no there was Syria. there were friend even for dermot hudson i recall seeing him st on the stand watching the the uh, chairman of the chairman uk Juche study group yeah there were gerard de Padieu, the french actor what uh, yeah he he was on the, on the uh benches behind uh, i seem to remember yeah, there was a quite a motley crew mm. of uh, friendship associates watching that one. But I think since the main then, guest was maybe the Russian parliamentary speaker. Yeah, and, and the Chinese Chinese uh, number two. But or since three. then, it's all been yeah. COVID, so that's been the kind of one just or one excuse. Yeah, but no COVID in uh, February 2018. But the, I think I got the impression with that one that had diplomacy not started having the green sprouts with South Korea and the US around that time, they would have put a lot more focus onto that military parade and sort of invited, because it seemed to be timed and scheduled to, to be a uh, juxtaposition with uh, the Winter Olympics. But then it seems like they got kind of cold feet and really didn't play it up that much. I foreign know, me I, I think foreign media were not invited and yeah. But if you go back and look at it, there was still quite the rhetoric coming out of North Korea at that time was still very much yeah. uh, similar to 2017. But anyway. Now, what were the, uh, the, some of the historical elements that were in the parade, uh, uh, Min? You, you mentioned that there was some uh, homage play, paid to uh, dead commanders of the past. So these are men who served under Kim Il-sung, I'm guessing, in the anti-Japanese struggle or in the, in the Korean War. Right. They refer to them as deceased unit commanders in the past, and there were black and white photos, portraits of these people with their names, uh, and the soldiers were marching with a big card of, with their portrait and their names right behind the white horse unit and here and there as well. Interesting. Can I, let me check this with you. It's, it doesn't seem like it's a common thing for North Korea to valorize other heroes that are not Kim Il-sung. That's not true. Please. There's plenty. Well, this is the one thing I haven't had a chance to look into yet. But um, you know, there's plenty of there are plenty of statues all around North Korea mm -hmm. of non Kim family people. You know, military heroes. A lot of it does reference the anti Japanese fighters or Korean War fighters. There are a lot of schools named after people that aren't in the Kim family. There's a lot of reverence for people who aren't in the Kim family. But one thing I found interesting about the parade yesterday was if you compare it to last year. Uh, there are schools that march in the parade as well, not just soldiers. But mm. uh, I, I don't exactly, I have to learn, but I don't exactly know who these people are supposed to be. If they're soldiers guarding 
the school or you know part of like an ROTC type of situation at the schools but so they're in military uniforms uh kind of yeah mm -hmm. and they march in the parade they goose step and so there are schools like well one is Kim Jong-suk uh, Naval Academy that's is you know part of the Kim family but there are other schools too which I'm forgetting the names of right now but in the past all these schools would just be named Kim Jong-suk Naval Academy and uh now they've all been on the end of their names have been tacked on uh, Myeongqing, which what does that mean? Uh, nicknamed after, so it's like Kim Jong Suk Myeongqing, uh, Hegun Dehak or something. Right, and oh. Kim Chek Myeongqing Kongun Dehak, right. which is Kim Chek named Air Force. Right, so That's they've added mean. this named thing into it, which I'm I, almost starting to interpret as kind of like a separation because they don't add that to like Kim Il Sung. Right, Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il yeah. ones are just used without named yeah. anything. So in that sense, yes, to answer your question, it's. It's common for there to be people revered that aren't in the Kim family, but there's also this uh, sensitivity towards separating them. Okay. Uh, coming back to the Kim family, so uh, who wasn't there in the uh, in the parade, or who was at least not visible? I'm a pro Kim Yo Jung spotter, but she wasn't there, um, or she wasn't. That's the sister of, uh, of yes, Kim, Kim Yo Jung was not in a full shot, is what I can confirm. Um, there was one shot where I could see someone. Um, shepherding the children who gave flowers to Kim Jong-un, which sort of looked like her, looking at the hair and forehead, but it wasn't clear. Hmm. Um, but what is clear that she wasn't one of the uh, Kim family um, optics attention, at least during the parade. What about Hyun Sung-wa? Hyun Sung-wa was there. She was, uh, she was there. She, Hyun Sung-wa was there. How but close to the center? Very close. Uh, but, but not woman. in the parade ones. But um, you can you can find her when the flower thing is happening. And also, there was a new thing this time, which was a pre-parade banquet. But mm. it was like uh, those who are listening in from DC, you, you know how networking dinners look like. You just walk around having finger food, chocolate found you fountain sometimes oh, love them. very luxurious ones and Choi you can see Choi one um top eight looking at the fondue and just eating these are, finger you, are, food. You, are you talking about the pre the the yangak the hotel or you're talking about the parade the green room thing the green room thing what are you the, talking about? the one that aired yesterday yeah so there's two separate things one oh, okay. so number one yeah kim yo jung was at the the banquet the day before yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a banquet for military commanders where the daughter was also the center of attention I don't really know how much it matters if, we, if Kim Jong is there or not. You probably want to review the video of the military parade. She's yeah, probably yeah. there. She I don't is know. probably there. I just couldn't see um, her. But but what you're saying that's an interesting. It's like a f another fun weird thing about the parade was they decided to have this whole uh, scene where Kim Jong Un arrives. They do the, the the ceremony on the red carpet. Then he enters the the this nice building hmm. uh, attached to the viewing stand of the military parade. But they showed them all inside, sitting on couches, eating ice cream. Exactly, you know. exactly. It was very strange scenes. Huh. So then uh, in the couch, very luxurious. Very luxurious. The daughter's sitting there Not touching relatable. the father's face. Yeah, like having little chats. Having little chats. And then Hyun Sung-wa was there because Hyun Sung-wa Sung walked in, said something. They all laughed. Uh. Military officials are like clapping, laughing. Um, but in that particular scene, I couldn't see Kim Yo-jong. Wow. But that, that whole that scene, I the green room. But it wasn't, I it wasn't much about Kim Yo-jong, but it was about like a family greeting the top official sort of optic. But mm -hmm. it was interesting to see yeah, there, why they had to do it like that. Yeah, it's, I wonder how, what that, how that's received by uh, North Koreans watching this on TV. I mean, it's, it's exactly. very... It was way too luxurious. Mm -hmm. wow. Especially during this, uh, this time of belt tightening. Yeah, because it wasn't an event like the banquet for the commanders, which, okay, sure, you have nice food, caterers and all that. But it's just like, yeah, the green room. They're just eating nice snacks, ice cream in I little could, cups. Like. Yeah, I could <laughs> see the daughter also having something that looked like a wine glass, but it seemed like Oranges. something like a chocolate milk. Oh. or. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, let's talk about the uh, the banquet then the day before on the Tuesday that was uh, looks like it was maybe held at the Young Oh, Are we sure yeah. about that? Yeah, I, I wrote a story the, about this. I the spoke hotel to, where we've all stayed at some time. Yeah, I spoke to all our old tourist friends, uh, collected their um, impressions, which were shock, surprise, uh, more surprise that... Now, the Young was huge. Where in the Young Agdor? Was this in one of the banquet halls? The weirdest part. Mm. Yeah, it was in the lobby and check-in area. Just the lobby. Um, so it's where yeah. you normally come in the door, and that's the first thing you see in that lobby, just beside the bar with the lonely uh, shark. Uh, that, yeah, Kim Jong Un did a speech in front of the check-in desk. They had um, the staircase. They had uh, 
uh, curtains uh, hiding the check-in area. Wow. And he was just in front of those at one point. Yeah, it was it was uh, odd. I mean, what some people I spoke to uh, familiar with the young actor point out that the lobby was the only part of the hotel renovated in 2019. Ah. The rest of it still looks like its original mid-90s uh, aesthetic. And so that may be why they picked that part of the hotel. But same time, Corio Hotel has also been renovated recently, at, at least the lobby, and has maybe a grander tradition for domestic use as well. But yeah, the Young Actor is a, it's a very odd location for. And the lobby like wouldn't that. normally be the warmest part of the hotel, so unless they've turned up the heating there significantly on a winter's night. That could Kim, be a bit chilly. Kim Jong Un was sitting at a place I have had many beers with North Korean guides and been quite drunken in the in the um, bar. No, uh, when you come in on the left, there's an area of um, chairs and tables yeah. where there's a bar at the end of it, and oh, they yes. do. Um, they do a coffee there. You sit it. opposite the, the check-in desks and you can have beer and finger food. I look forward right. to you posting a photo of you sitting there next time if you're ever able if to. If you ever have a drunken photo. I, I, like, hey, I will be doing a photo <laughs> gallery on... I think there'll, there'll be a red chair there next time. Where, with a, in a glass box. Where, in a glass where you Temperature-controlled yeah. glass box. Yeah. Uh, how was the... Uh, I mean, was it labeled as the Young Actor in North Korean state reporting. What did they call it? That was pretty funny, actually, because they... Well, I mean, they just called it the lodgings of the commanders, which was... Again, they don't announce the military parade ahead of time. We can see it's going to happen, but mm -hmm. because you can see that they call it the lodgings of the commanders at a banquet, obviously they're in town for some event. So it was another sign that the military parade was imminent. But because they just called it the military, the commanders' lodgings, you had a lot of news outlets uh, just Same weirdly interpreting barracks. it as the barracks of yeah. soldiers' barracks. Yeah, barracks. So please stop saying that, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it definitely isn't yeah, barracks. Uh, was it at that event that Ri Sol Ju was wearing a rocket pendant? Uh, yeah. Kim Ju Kim Ju was wearing. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was it was the wife. Oh really? Ri Sol Ju yeah. was wearing a hwasong necklace. Oh, it wasn't necklace. his daughter. Yeah, I actually no, no, no. I gave your I gave your article a copy of it last night. Oh my I, bad. I changed it, but <laughs> but uh. Who noticed that? Because I didn't notice that. Chan and Bum posted it on Twitter. I saw a lot of people post on Twitter, but South I thought Korean it was a great, media reported on great it. catch. That's a really funny. That is, yeah, I wouldn't have seen that either. Uh, that you Who zooms zoom into? In. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do. I mean, I, I wish do. I would have noticed that. But. Yeah. Uh, well, so let's, um, as our last topic today, let's talk about uh, what is Kim ju status now? I mean, is she <laughs> the successor? I know that's a hot topic. Okay, so uh, I have strong views on this. I know me others too. don't. Me too. Ne me next. Okay, so and I, and I don't have. Some, some I don't have strong views. I think we shouldn't have strong views. That's my <laughs> point. So look, uh, I, I was explaining this in a debate today uh, with some that don't believe this, but look, we know very likely the next leader of North Korea will be a child of Kim Jong Un. In the past, with Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il, they only publicly introduced one child of those two leaders uh, to then p pave the way for them to become the success succeeding leader of North Korea. By public, you mean state media? Just yeah. To, yeah. The way she has been introduced at the front and center of military activity, to me, is a very strong indicator that just as Kim Jong-un became a four-star general when he was like age 26 or whatever it was in, in 2010, she is being given a very important role that goes beyond just uh, what some people suggest is like this soft side uh, presentation of um, Kim Jong-un and his uh, interest in showing his royal family to, to the, the citizens. And lastly, we don't know what happened in April 2020 when Kim Jong-un missed uh, the April 15th activities. Uh, Daily NK, uh, you'll remember at the time, said there was a cardiac health event it's almost certain that he was sick that day with something because that was a, a, a very important event to take part in. His grandfather's yeah. birthday. He couldn't even send flowers that day, which mm. is very, very odd. Sure. And um, we, when he did come back, he looked pretty damn unhealthy. He's yo-yoed in weight up and down. He's had weird puncture marks on his uh, wrist. To me, it suggests uh, that there is a, some kind of underlying health issue. And to, I, I strongly suspect that they're starting early compared to Kim Jong-il in terms of paving the way for uh, her to be the uh, pick do bloodline successor. And I suspect that there are mechanisms to support her in the event of a sudden death. Uh, for example, uh, sister Kim Jong-il or 
I was trying to remember what it was today, but I, I seem to vividly recall last year in state media this new um, apparatus within the Korean Workers' Party that was established as a kind of caretaker power structure. So that's the party rule, party regulation mm -hmm. revision, which a lot of people initially thought would be Choi Yong-won's role. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Second in hand. Um, it's a position called like first <sighs> vice chairman mm -hmm. of the State Affairs Commission. Something like something. That. I, I forgot exactly yeah. what yeah. But it was like basically second in hand. Or maybe it was in the party structure. Second in command. Of the workers' yeah. party in the party structure. So you yeah. put all that together mm -hmm. to just, in my humble opinion, it looks like she's the... But yeah, let's hear from okay. Jong-un. I strongly disagree. All due respect. Um, You're fired. <laughs> That's, you heard it here first. <laughs> well, I, I, we I, 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 line? it's not like I'm <laughs> strongly arguing. Yeah. I'm not strongly arguing she's like not a successor. I'm just saying that we have to look at it from many different contexts that are involved in how not just the text, but also how the video and the photos frame the optics. Um, first of all, a lot of people have been talking about um, how to interpret this chunggyeonghan respected, beloved, 사랑하는, 존귀하는, precious, um, all these um, descriptions that are attached to the daughter. I think it's not wise to read too much into it because first of all, we don't know who ordered that kind of description. Did Kim Jong-un say, call her respected daughter? Or did the propaganda department people just voluntarily thought, oh, she's a picked up bloodline, we should say something. We just don't know what happened um, when they were describing the daughter. So that's one. They are not revealing her name. They're not giving her a position. She's very young. Um, and when you look at the photos and the videos, whenever the state media is zooming into her, a lot of the themes are not about her potential leadership, mm -hmm. but also, but more about how she is like a loving, caring daughter next to the father. And it seems like that so far it has been a theme. So I think we need caution when we are looking at um, how we interpret how she's in the center. Uh, being in a center means that the prop propaganda department wants attention to her for some reason, right. not necessarily because of a succession. Sure, if she becomes a successor, it will be helpful if she already is familiar to the people, but that might not be the only reason. Another part of it is the NIS believes that there's an elder son of Kim Jong-un. We have never independently verified. What do verified. we know about other siblings? We don't know. Okay, so the NIS claims some information, but we don't know what it is. Right, and just related to that, mm. some people were arguing that maybe that son is not a leader material. Mm -hmm. So like Kim Jong-il really liked Kim Yo-jung because she's gutsy. Um, maybe Kim Jong-un likes his daughter because she's a leadership material. We don't know. We can't ask Kim Jong-un. But so far, the how the state media articles were framing right after, like edit, through editorials right after there was a daughter appearance and so on and so forth, they were focusing a lot on how the leader is, his priority is basically defending the security of the country through nuclear weapons and missiles for the next generation. It seems like it's always attached to the Kim Jue appearance, including the military parade yesterday, uh, military parade coverage yesterday. So there's a lot of things going on when we are seeing the daughter in the state media articles. So I think it's I think it's a little too hasty to conclude that it's a clear evidence that she's a successor. Chad, back to you. If it was about um, this whole legitimacy of passing nuclear weapons to the next generation, why just bring out one child? Why not bring out all of them? So there are... I have asked a few defectors about this and also political science about this. Um, when it's, um, so first of all, it's, if, if there's a first, a first son that he is actually grooming to become a leader one day, um, I think it could be interpreted the other way around. But people are saying like, if, if there is a successor, he wouldn't be revealing him mm. until he is actually sure. Uh, but but you can interpret it the other way around easily. Kim right? Il Sung, I mean, he was dead like uh, fifteen years almost before when he first introduced Kim Jong Il. Mm. So yeah, I I don't I I think you could be right with all of this, but it still could support the idea that she is. I don't a think successor. it's mutually not right. mutually exclusive. I think right. there are a lot of considerations when a country as secretive as North Korea decides to reveal one of the children. Mm -hmm. um, they would have calculated there is more cost, uh, more benefit than cost um, mm -hmm. when it comes to revealing her when, it, when she's so young. But about the military parade and the military activity related parts of revelations or public appearances of this daughter. 
Mm-hmm. Um, one defector actually pointed out to me that if she was actually a successor, Kim Jong Un wouldn't be bringing her just to the military related or security related related activities, but also econ activities, which is a priority for North Korea yeah. as well. And from the North Korean public's point of view, if she's not accompanying him publicly to like different sector activities, it will look like the messaging is particular towards he, certain directions. He's not really done much though since That's she's true. been. It's just five, so we have to keep an eye on it. I mean, he's, ba- he's like barely appearing any, or doing any economic visits. That is true. But when it comes to public appearance itself for Kim Jong Un, it has been a very the number was very low. He's only, he's only done like a few economic yeah. appearances in the last couple, in the last like three years, basically. Right. It's under five, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And Colin, do you have uh, strong views about having strong views? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think I mostly agree with what Jungmin said. Um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Chad. It's like, <laughs> I, I get, I, uh, you know, uh, argue the, the points to emphasize what we need to watch out for in the future, but I just think it's uh, it's better to just wait and see. I mean, it, um, I I was gonna say what you said, Jungmin. I I agree that if we see her mo- going around at other sector types of appearances, doing an on the spot guidance, for example, or with Dad on an on the spot, like going guidance. to Chungpyeong greenhouse or something mm-hmm. like yeah, that, exactly, or a potato farm, yeah, or the terrapin. But they'll Breeding still center. be they're still good. If uh, the thing is, even if all that happens, I guarantee we're gonna have people saying, Oh, it's too early to know. It could be like, I will be to... saying that because <laughs> it's not enough sign to say it's clear evidence. It's too when rushed. does it become when does it become a sign? When, well, what, when they give her well, a let position. Me ask this. What is it? Um but what but what even if they give her a position though, everything we've just discussed could still suggest that to play devil's advocate, we just don't here, know until he dies. <laughs> well, let me let but me ask something. Would, would you would you have said the same was true in the case of Kim Jong Un? I mean, until his coming out party in September 2010, he didn't have any official position. That's right? true. Uh, but looking back, I mean, people were already saying before then that there were enough signs that Kim Jong Un, rather than mm-hmm. the, the two older brothers, mm. uh, was the chosen one. And so you could say, well, we were not sure until he gets a position, but the patterns show something. But right. back then, he was already being he was already introduced to the propaganda in 20, 2009 by name mm-hmm. with uh, more clear types of references to him being. But not in state media by name, not in state media, but in in state enough in public in state propaganda to where a tourist took a picture of a sign mm-hmm. on a wall talking about Kim Jong Un by name being the successor in two thousand nine. So, of course, there's no tourists now. But I was just going to say that. Uh, I was going to ask the question: Why, why do we pay so much attention to it? Sometimes I, am, I am fall victim to this. I uh, get obsessed with trying to uh, look deep in, like you know, find some what's going on in this photo and that photo. Is she successor? Is she not successor? Yeah. Obsessed with that question, but we want to know, right? Because if it's a sign of Kim Jong Un's deteriorating health, that's why I believe Chad is focused on it because that would be a big security issue for the region, right? So I think it's safer to just wait and see whenever there is a more clear sign that she's being introduced in state media as a successor, because that's going to be the uh, indicator that we really need to worry. And our customer, you know, our our clients, people that read our website need to know that something might change. Uh, There might be a big security issue in the region if Kim Jong-un dies. So um, that's why I think Chad wants people to be alert to it now. Maybe there is a health issue. But I think that they will make it more clear in state media when it gets closer to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you think maybe he could die suddenly at any moment, and that's why. Well, I, I, anyone can die suddenly anyone, at any moment, yeah, that's right? True. But yeah. these things do happen. Uh, um, quick final thoughts: What are we uh, from this parade? What are we taking forward with us into uh, the next few weeks and Kim, months? Kim Jue is the next leader of North Korea. That's me. <laughs> there it is. Okay. All right. Please don't quote him. Kim Jong Il birthday on February sixteenth. Yes. Uh, I have a few things that I'm watching for. So, you know, every year in North Korea, they promote a big, big construction projects. Some, there are arguments that this keeps the, the, the people busy. That keeps their, the propaganda focus saturated. You know, people have something to, to focus their energy on and all the mandatory propaganda meetings. So there's going to be right. The, the thing that's interesting about recently is the, the new mobilization, the nationwide mobilization is, uh, taking young youth from the provinces 
and dispatching them to the capital to build a new, a quote unquote, a new street mm. of apartments. Oh, another one. But it's going to be in Pyongyang this time. Whereas last year, the big focus was mobilizing, you know, the nice, the people living a nice life in Pyongyang out to the provinces to build homes for the farms. Mm. So we, I wrote about this last week. There was a new giant uh, construction workers camp that has popped up on the eastern outskirts of Pyongyang. And mm. maybe that's a new big construction project. I believe that's going to be maybe Kim Jong-un showing up at a groundbreaking ceremony in the next few weeks. And yeah, Kim Jong-un's birthday on February 16th. Maybe more military stuff like at that point. And then obviously missile, <laughs> missile tests and the <laughs> much anticipated nuclear test. These are all things that could happen. Uh, someone should put me in a headline that uh, the nuclear test could happen in the future. Hey. <laughs> all right. Well, that is a great place for us to, uh, to end. It. Oh, you got a final thought, Chongmin? Uh, we are looking at potentially a very busy few months on the Korean Peninsula. There is a... Now that the parade's over, we are back to wondering when the next missile launch from North Korea will be, mm. right? And then February, we have a tabletop exercise between U.S. and South Korea that South Korea is making a very big deal out of about... Um, joint nuclear planning or ah. execution. And then there are springtime live fire exercises that are planned on the Korean Peninsula. And if you remember last on the year... Side? Yes. Um, and last year from September until November, whenever there were joint exercises on the southern side of the peninsula, North Korea reacted and framed it as a counter-response drill. So we are looking forward mm -hmm. to that. Wow. Missile tests Sat almost every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Satellite launch, April as well. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's Reconnaissance months, satellite right. from the North Koreans. Drone? Well, it's never yeah. a dull day here on the Korean Peninsula. There's always something going on. Keep your eyes peeled and stay tuned to the nknews.org website as well as to the NK News podcast. Thank you very much for joining me on the show today, Chad, Colin, and Jongmin. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Find us on Twitter at nknews.org and each of our individual Twitter handles. Ladies and gentlemen, if you already have an NK News account and if you're a think tank, business, or academic institution, take a look at NK Pro and also Korea Pro. These platforms offer unparalleled services specifically catering to the needs of professionals who monitor developments on the Korean Peninsula. You can acquire about access and a trial membership by writing an email to membership at nknews.org today. Our thanks as always go to Brian Betts and Arius Dare for facilitating this episode and to our post-recording producer genius Gabby Magnuson who evens out all the audio levels, cuts out the extraneous noises, bodily silences, functions, etc. Thank you very much. Listen again next time. 